2023 BMW IBS Air Bobsleigh Skeleton and Parasport World Championships. We're in Samaritz, the home of ice sliding, where for 125 years they have been charging down the hill from Samaritz to the neighboring village of Celerina. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a historic day for the ice sliding sports. For the first time ever, Parasport is part of the full World Championships. I'm Martin Haven, delighted to have alongside me Australian driver Brianna Walker and Bree. For these guys, as well as for everybody else in the sliding fraternity, for the first time bringing Parasport into the world, I think is a, is a huge step forward for, for all of the competitors. Oh, definitely. It's a great to have them along and they're so privileged to be a part of the IBSF World Championship program here in St. Moritz this year. So it's going to be a thrilling race and I'm excited to be here seeing it front and centre. Well, your experience actually kind of parallels to them because they are all in monobob sleds, the same that you drive in the, in the, in the women's monobob competition. So you will understand the equipment. Now, we've got 18 athletes in the field. They will be sharing sleds. So they're going in two groups, the first group for one to nine start order and then they will go back up to the top the states will be handed over to their teammates and we will see for the first time in operation this unique starting device which gives everybody in theory at least the exact same start first man down flavio minardi 22 year old former hockey player from cortina in italy now these guys have raced these sleds most of them exactly once. That was last week in Innsbruck in the European Championship. So they're getting a feel for the mono down here in Samaritz. And after he's doing a really good runs. job to begin with. Oh, that wall has been a bit tricky this year. That's the first quarter there. And they're coming through Snake 2. It's a bit of a skid off there. See how he navigates Sunny. Oh, getting the, the lip of the loose start there. But he's got it back online, heading into Horseshoe. It's been a bit tricky here in Horseshoe this year as well, but he's doing a great job. Coming through Shamrock into Devil's Dyke. He's got it. This is where you really start to build speed on this track and you come around into Bridge and then you come up into, into Leap. And Sachs, you want to keep the sled really straight going into Martino to get lots of pressure in this last corner. And then Patago, this has also been a tricky corner, but he did well. And he is the holder of the track record and the start record at the moment. The start record probably won't vary that much because it is down to the equipment, but the first man down, or first woman down every season in each category has the track record. So Flavio Minardi gets our world championships underway. Just 22 years of age. And these these monos are pretty skiddy here. Look at the height Definitely. he gets here. Tap yes, he. Oh, he just <laughs> nearly got the lip of, of the roof I, I there. I think in we Horseshoe. heard the tap. So. Oh, yeah, he got it there. But obviously, when you hit the roof, you just let it come down and and continue on. You can't panic there. And he did a great job. So Italy won, and now Italy second off as well. This is David Yenavine from the Sinterol, 31 years of age. Discovered bobsleigh in lockdown. So 6.43, just a fraction difference in the start. The equipment is the same that uh, launches all the sleds. So some of it will be just a, a slight variation. Coming into wall, let's see how he goes through here. It's been really, really tricky this year. And then into snake one and snake two. Not too bad. Out of sunny. Great job there, really straight. You want to be really quiet through this section because it's quite flat. And coming into horseshoe, quite a lo much lower line. And, oh, and there we are, oh, and he's back up. Yeah. That's the thing about these monobobs is that when if you have a crash, often athletes pop back up, and that's really good because you obviously can get quite hurt with the crash there. A little less weight in with the single athlete as well than in the two-seat sleds. They do tend to pop back up. These fast four corners down at the bottom is actually pretty straight down here as well. He didn't so he, do too bad. No, he was three tenths up. And, of course, going upside down and coming back up with a taken speed out of the sled, and that chases him all the way down. 115 at 23. It was quite a shame. He was doing really, really well up until Horseshoe, but yep. probably on the replay you'll see that he had quite a low line coming around, and that just made picked him up on the end. 
Yeah, kind of variation there because Flavio Minardi was probably higher than most will go. And uh, David here a little lower, and as a result, oh, and hit the camera on the end. Luckily, that roof is there, and it saved him and popped him back down. Yep. Very lucky that he came up quite quickly there yeah. and telephone. So, <laughs> down and done. A big, big smile on his face under the helmet. And our third starter is Nico Johan, 33 years of age. Started in 2017. Well, the first kink got him there a little bit, but I've heard he's been doing quite well in training this week, yep. so it'll be interesting to see how he goes here. European bronze medalist last week in Innsbruck and the year before when it was here in Samaritz. This is a track he knows and likes well. Oh, very good there. He was really straight out of wall. We haven't seen that yet. And also not too bad out of snake uh, two there. Now, when the athletes first started using these monobob type sleds, uh, all the coaches were going, yeah, great, we'll put big fat runners on them. <laughs> and uh, they're all, no, they, they have discovered it. In fact, control is an awful lot better. Definitely, especially in the back of the sled. You want to be nice and controlled there so you're not skinning out. And Nico is doing a fantastic job here. Really, and he's starting to build a lot of speed down in these bottom corners, keeping the sled quite low and building that speed into the last final corners. Well, they had five runs in training split over two days. Nico was fastest of all in the final run, so he was absolutely bubbling about being here at 1.13.44. Eight tenths up, fantastic run there. Yeah. Now, again, as with all the other World Championship disciplines, it's about that consistency. One good run is great, but you need another three. Shakes his head, so... He doesn't seem to be too happy about that one, yeah. but I, I, I'm sure in the review of the video, he'll see that he did actually quite well. Now, that's about where you need to be in Horseshoe, not right up at the lip and not hovering down in the bottom. Yep, and he's coming down, and he did a really fantastic job there. You can see at the back there, that big silver disc below, just at the bottom of the chassis. That the, Now the, it looks a little bit happier. They, they have an electromagnet that uh, the, the ram just sort of goes backwards and forwards, keeps the sled moving on the ice, and then when they are launched, as Israel Blanco is here from Spain, and they come into the first corner, handled that nicely. Very good, I got the start record there. You want to keep the sled really quiet in this section because obviously you, this is the longest straightaways and you build a lot of speed and he's done just that. So any kids watching will certainly recognize the helmet livery. Ah, <laughs> from the minions. Yeah, exactly, yes. <laughs> if you're going to have the Spanish colors, predominantly yellow, then uh, yeah, Israel's gone with minions. <laughs> from Asturias in northern Spain. Nine seasons of sliding now, so he started with the plank sleds, the non-articulated sleds, and uh, having to discover how to drive these ones. Doing really well here. He had a little bit of a skid out of Shamrock there, but he's doing quite well. Good results this season, a bronze and a gold in the two races in Lake Placid before Christmas, but uh, struggled with the new equipment, 12th and 16th in the Eagles. Yeah, it's a hard ask for these athletes. They haven't had many runs on these uh, new extent sleds. Um, and even some athletes have only just gotten them this week. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's really hard to adapt to new equipment. But I think these guys are doing a really good job so far. Competed for Spain in their para handball national team and now coaches youngsters in para handball. Favourite track, Lake Placid. Not surprising after uh, a bunch of medals a couple of weeks ago. Now then, Artis Klotz from Latvia, 31 years of, uh, of age, from Sigulda. Started in Eagles back in 2011. So he's a 12-year veteran of the sport. One of the oldest athletes competing out here today, and he was European champion last week. Correct. Oh, he had a bit of a skid there navigating the first kink. Can be kind of tricky. So see if he gets the sled back online. He's, yep, he's got it going straight here. It's all about quiet hands here, isn't it? Certainly. About not breathing and not steering. Yes, you hardly breathe when you want to go down that straight. And he came a little bit early off wall there. 
coming through Snake 1 and 2, bit of a skid. Yeah, Snake's been tricky this year as well, certainly. more than others. Uh, this is the trickiest Samaritz we've had in years and years. Yeah, yes, yeah, certainly, especially the upper section has been quite tricky. And Horseshoe is taking a lower line this year, which you can, uh, which has uh, been quite tricky for some athletes to navigate. Yeah. Second spot at the moment, around two tenths of a second back on Nico Johan. Good speed though, top speed. Yep, he's really got the sled going now. He had a little bit of trouble in the top section, but this bottom section, he's cleaned it right up. Really loves racing here in Samaritz. I mean, who doesn't? You know, yeah, of course. If you hate Samaritz, you're definitely in the wrong sport. And across the line, 1900s back, he held on to that really well. Not too bad. If he cleans up that top section, he's going to have a good race on his hands. So our current leader is Nico Johan of Germany. Artis Potts moves into second ahead of Israel Blanco. Five of our first nine sleds down in this first group. Yeah, see there, just off wall here. He just came down a little bit too early and got a skid happening. Also off Sunny here, and he got the lip of the loose start there. But I'm sure he's going to look at the video later and, and clean that up. And there's the brakes digging in. Again, in the mono, you're your own brakeman as well as your own driver. You've got to get the thing started and stopped. Yes, yeah, sometimes when I'm going through the monobobs, I forget that I'm actually my own brakeman, so... <laughs> Shouting brakes and there's no answer from behind. Exactly. And Ooh, so... Nice run through the first corner from Jonas Fry, the Swiss hopeful. We've got the, the local nice. boy here. Yep. 25 years of age, started competing in 2019, so this is his fourth season. He is a double world champion, and he is looking for a hat-trick here in Samaritz, but he's going to need to be tidier than that. Very skiddy. Really, really get, catching people off the walls. Oh, and even exit of Sunny here. He needs to get the sled going a little bit straighter. He's just quite skiddy at the back here. Okay, I wonder if he's just a little bit tight this morning, a bit nervy. Yeah, I mean, look, he's on his home track here. He could, it's a lot of pressure here for the Swiss athletes, and that could be catching him off guard. But often you get the nerves out on your first run, and then uh, the rest of the other runs you kind of calm down a little bit and you can get the sled going a bit better. Oh, and again, long skid down at the bottom, only the fourth best speed. Will he be in third place ahead of Israel Blanco? Let's take a look at the line. He is yes, in third is. by uh, about 17 hundredths of a second. World champion here in 2021. World champion in Lillehammer last year in Norway. Ahead of Flavio Minardi and Chris Stewart of Switzerland. So he's looking for a third straight world championships. Nobody's done that so far. Oh, that would be a great achievement. But yeah, he just needs to tidy up this top section. He had a lot, his back end was really skiddy. And especially down the bottom, you can't, you've got to be straight out of Gunter Sachs there, just so you can get a lot of speed going into that final corner. From Great Britain, Corey Matt, one of the original Parabob athletes as well. From Bridgetown Barbados originally, now lives in Swindon in Wiltshire. He's a member of the Household Cavalry. Uh, did well around there. Yeah, nice smooth run. That corner is so true. That can be death to your run, can't it? Oh, Just getting certainly. that wrong. It, it, you got to be so quiet through those top, through this top section, just so you can build the speed from your start. And Corey's doing a very good job here. Oh, he had a little bit of a tap, and that's. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. It's really tricky. That happened in my race, actually. You tap off that wall and you go skidding into S, um, to Snake One. European champion in Oberhof in 2020, three consecutive European silvers in the last three years, and he has been a world championship silver medalist in 2019 in Lake Placid, most recent medal. He's got the sled going straight here. He's doing a really good job. And Arsenal. still tying for the lead, second best speed. Rivaling Nico Johan of Germany, Oh, look, he's jumped in front here, doing yep. a really good job. It's going to be a new track record for Corey Mapp of Great Britain. And across the line, 113.43. Oh, like 100 here. We've got a race on our hands. Really good job, Corey. This is going to be remembered for two things, this world. 
how tricky Sam Ritz is with all of the like the last decade's worth of little wrinkles thrown into one and also hundreds of a second. Yep. We've had medals by hundreds of a second in almost every event so far this week or last week. And it looks like it may well continue. So Corey Mapp leads by one hundredth. I'm sure he's going to look at this video and know he can tidy up this section. <laughs> it's well, if he doesn't, Graham Richardson is going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure he will. No, he's going to look at that and say he knows he has a lot more time in the bag. So our next starter is Bob Balk from the USA, a relative newcomer. It's only his second year of sliding, but he is a six-time Paralympian, four times in winter in cross-country skiing. And Bob has 16-year-old triplets back home. He, he says are hopefully getting their driver's licenses this week. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to be cheap. <laughs> The US program's doing really great. They're being coached by Brittany Reinbolt, who yeah. had, is a former US pilot, one of the most, the nicest athletes out there on the tour. She said she's having such a good time coming back and coaching it and sort of wasn't expecting actually to like being back in a track without sliding, but is loving it. The enthusiasm of these athletes is second to none. And they've been doing a really great job. I think the US athletes are ranked one and two in the world right now. Yep. And Bob is also doing a great job here. Really, really Ooh. getting... Oh! <laughs> no, the camera lost him. That's OK. He was fine. Yeah, he's had two bronze medals this season, one in Lake Placid race two, and bronze in the first race with the brand new sled in Innsbruck last weekend. So, uh, yeah, a, a decent run. Sixth place, 114.05, lots to tidy up. And that's the good news, is that if you're behind and you went as well as you can possibly go, then you're left scratching your head. Yes, yeah, If you know there are errors, you've got work to do. Yeah, definitely. He's going to go back up there, talk with Brittany, I'm sure, and see how he can fix up this run. Quite a low line here through Horseshoe. And he gets picked up on the end here. You'll see the sled kind of flop off. And that, that there, that's, this is a part of the track where you really start to build your speed, so you don't want to be doing any of those flopping off corners. So I'm sure... He didn't have a major panic there. He, that was good. Yeah. Next up, Will Castillo. He is our World Cup points leader, the winner in Lake Placid race one and Innsbruck race one, silver in Lake Placid race two, just off the podium in fourth place in the final race in Innsbruck last weekend and a 6.38 getaway. You can see he's actually got his nose quite up close to the sled. I'm sure he's trying to just make sure the aerodynamics is quite well and it's doing, it's doing really good things so far. He's out of the wall it's a little bit tricky and let's see how he navigates the snakes not too bad well in north america they use a different brand of sled but it, it is an articulated sled so they're quite used to that in europe they've had latvian built sleds up until this season which are not articulated and drive very differently in these sleds you have to do much less steering for the same effect so and then you come to Samaritz where you have to do much less steering anyway so they're trying to do as little as possible certainly and i was talking to some of the athletes too and they were saying that the uh, the runners are a little bit thicker so there's a lot of th different elements that they have to uh, figure out here having a huge run will castillo the speed not as great at the bottom but he had a three tenths of a second lead so he will be ahead of Corey Mapp at the line Ooh. by 400. Yeah. And there's yeah. Britain. Look, she's looking very happy there. And <laughs> I'm sure they're going to look at that run and see that there's a, a few things that he can tidy up so he can maybe extend that lead in the next run. So his teammate Austin Parker will go in the third heat, but for the moment, Will Castillo leads Corey Mapp and Nico Johan of Germany. Now, of course, as the day progresses, if we don't get the foot and a half of snow that is forecast, the track will speed up. So the second group will have a slight advantage over the first group, but they will then go back to back in their two heats, and then the first group will go in the last heat, so they'll get it slightly kind of better evens out yeah. as, the, as the heat goes on. And the sun, so when in St. Moritz, when the sun starts shining, the track gets a little bit slicker, and so you're obvi you might see some faster times in the second heat, but I'm sure as when um, it flips um, for that second heat, then uh, we'll see if, who really is in the lead here. 
Well, the uh, crew that follow the para-athletes around, really well drilled. They know how to get them in and out, back up onto the trucks, up to the top of the, uh, up to the, top of the track. And at the moment is Will Castillo, the Purple Heart veteran from the USA, ahead of Corey Mapp. Nico Johan, Artus Kotz very much in the mix, and Jonas Fry. Well, let's hope he's worked out those first slide nerves because he is looking for a third straight world championship. That's how they are after the first nine sets. So that's our first group of athletes. They share the sleds with their, in some cases, teammates, in some cases, rivals who are coming down next. So. So Group B will be going next, yep. and uh, they go. The sleds go all back up to the top, and they uh, um, have time to polish the runners. Well, you can see. In fact, they haven't got much time to polish the runners because this is now uh, Gabriella Napova who will be first off in the next group. So she is already in the sled, but they will be going well, starting at 9:35 local time. It's now 9:21, so about 13, 14 minutes. Actually, the guys were saying because they use identical sleds. And because everything is, because it's Bob said, it always starts so damn early in the morning, it's usually half dark. So there was like, <laughs> occasionally you'll find yourself sanding runners, and then somebody will come over and go, Oh, you're doing my sled for me, thanks very much. Oh, really? Is yeah, that yeah. what happens? Oh. <laughs> well, because they're all upside down, so you sure. don't see the number. So and they're unless, all red, so. And you're half asleep, so, you know, unless you're paying attention, you do start, yeah, you, you can <laughs> end up prepping somebody else's runners for them. But this is a great thing about this sport is that all the sleds are exactly the same. So there is no, there's not really any variation when it comes to the equipment. Your setup is, the sled setup is the same. The yeah. runners are the same. The weight is also the same. So then the, that's the machine at the start, the launcher. It calibrates the athlete's weights to, and then it launches them and provides them, hopefully, with a similar start time. So then this sport is purely just about the driving. Yeah. And actually, the start time here is also dictated by how well you get around the first corner. Sure, Because it's not, it's not just you're running down here and loading, or you're pushed down here and loading, but the, the, the actual start clock is are out of the first turn. So if you make a complete mess of that, then what looks like a good start is... Your velocity is all gone. Absolutely. Now, you yep. can see the guys adjusting. For each of the different athletes, they're adjusting because, of course, everybody's different heights and weights and everything else, adjusting seat positions. They adjust the position of the foot pegs. They saw South Africa's uh, Michael Stevens, uh, the, the sled being adjusted. And actually, I'm sure you did as well. When I was watching training the other day, I was really impressed with the guys guys that, that go around, you know, led by Edgar's Mustans, the former Latvian driver, they are like grease lightning, boom, cowl off, boom, 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 adjust, 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 good, happy, yeah, bon, two yep. minutes. And, They're a well-oiled oil, machine, they've they got though? everything going very, um, like, well, and it, that just helps so, to make such a smooth race, and that's why it's so great to have these guys on because it's such a professional setup, and they're doing a fantastic job here. Sweden's Sebastian Westin, one of the leading lights in the sport, and uh, possibly one of the most nuts in a field of, of guys who are genuinely quite nuts. You know, we've got, <laughs> we got base jumpers uh, who have injured themselves and now are, are wheelchair base jumpers. We, we've, uh, Sebastian broke his back when he was in the Himalayas and you think, oh, what, well, climbing Everest? No, he, he went from, they, they went meditating with uh, Buddhist monks in the monastery and then they were doing barefoot mountain climbing. Oh. I know. So he, he is renowned in Samaritz. Uh, one year they were here for racing one of the female athletes from the track down to St. Moritz Bart. And now you know that, the, the way through town. By all accounts, pedestrians were leaping off the pavement and cars were swerving to avoid them as they just went held for leather down the hill, roaring their heads off with laughter. Unbelievable. That's and in fact, we were down at the bottom by the finish yesterday and about half a dozen chairs came just flying down the hill <laughs> past, past the track. So they'd obviously come down the roads that the trucks used to take the sleds up and down, which is close to the public. Yep. And, and just, yeah, been at the start and then, OK, we need to go home now. Off down the hill. How funny! Oh, and well, just I, you know, at speeds that you and I would be going. Ooh, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, not a, not in, out of a bobsleigh, anyways. <laughs> they do not care. No, that's <laughs> genuinely I, they don't mind at all. I was up at the track yesterday and watching um, the two men and four men uh, training, and uh, there was some athletes there, and they're just so privileged to be here and be a part of the atmosphere here, and. 
I think it's great that they're involved in because often um, we don't cross paths with the with the Parabob yeah. athletes and so it's great to have them here but like you know because of social media and everything you do you, you talk to them and they congratulate you on your um, competition and, and vice versa so to have them here and to be able to talk to them in person is fantastic yeah Alvils Brantz here one of our two Latvian sliders and uh one Another, of the longest competing athletes yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. In, in fact, Artus Klotz, although he's younger, has been competing even longer. Now, uh, Alvis was telling me he's 1 meter 94, which uh, my translation may be 6 foot 4, 6 foot 4 or so. And he said, these are tight, these sleds. It yep. is hard work to get. And you see the cows coming off here, so the foot pegs are adjustable depending on your height, exactly as they are when you're in a monobob. If, yep. you're, if, you, if you've got shorter legs or a shorter body, then you bring the, the foot pegs back. Because yep. the, now the para-athletes do have a seat belt. They are, they are strapped in, mm -hmm. but you don't. So you brace yourself by pushing your feet against those foot pegs and, and your backside against this tiny little half moon of plastic that's, quote, the seat. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which, I mean, nobody knows unless they've seen a bobsled just... Uh, I'm the, they it's are like not... racing yachts. They're built for speed, not comfort. No, certainly not. And um, with our bobsleds, we we can adjust a lot more than these guys. So we can mm. uh, adjust the seat, adjust the foot pegs. We can bring the seat back further. But because they have uh, a box at the back of their sled that helps them load into the sled, they can't really do that too much. So they're very limited on the changes that they can make in this sled. Also because they're sharing um, the, their sleds with other athletes. So it's really great to like it just makes it feel like completely fair and everything yep. is standardized i think it's fantastic absolutely and, and it makes it possible if every team or every athlete had to have his own sled and his own team of mechanics and everything else then it, it would just become yeah unwieldy so so having this ibsf team that do everything uh you know make sure all the sleds are fixed if they're if they're broken and, and whatever and adjust them for the athletes it's uh yeah it's a it's a a, a well thought out well oiled system you know it's been, they've been running for over a decade now with, and uh, it's growing athletes, and so. growing yeah, which is fantastic to see yeah, looking to try and get it into the uh, winter para games it is not going to be uh, a paralympic discipline for milan cortina 26 which is Kind of a shame for some of the Italians, particularly for uh, Flavio Minardi, who is from Cortina. I'm sure he will be there anyway. Uh, oh, certainly. But... Yeah, no, I was talking to the athletes about that yesterday, and they were just saying that the reason that it's not currently a part of the Paralympics uh, program is that they have to have a certain amount of nations competing for a certain amount of time. And um, I think it was a, a German athlete was just, like, one, competing one year less. Yeah. And so next year, we, if all these athletes and all these nations continue to compete, they're going to be able to secure their spot at, in the um, 2030 um, winter. Olympics. So that's going to be fantastic for them to be a part of it because, like I said, the sport is growing. There's a lot more athletes coming into the sport and I'm sure when it's part of the Paralympics movement, there's going to be more and more athletes come into the sport. I saw Ivo Ferriani, the president of the IBSF, up at the top of the track a little earlier. Uh, there's Martin, who is the Danish coach for our Swedish slider, Sebastian Weston. He said, please make sure to mention that Sebastian's coach is Danish because it will drive all the Swedes mad. <laughs> and there's Nico. He had a very good run on that first run. He, yeah. Only five thousand um, hundreds behind, so we've got a real race on our hands here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this Group B goes because they're going a little bit later and the sun's just starting to poke through the clouds here mm -hmm. and the track will be as because here in St. Moritz the more sleds that go down the smoother the, the track gets and obviously the smoother the track gets the faster the sleds go. Now, I don't know if you noticed when you got into your car or your van to come up this morning, but this morning there were, or oh, there was no frost on the windscreen of my no. car. Now we've had to scrape it every day. Mm -hmm. And so it's quite warm. It was about minus minus six this morning at 7 a.m. But 
that means that the, the track will be less frosty. If the windscreen yep. is less frosty, the track will be less frosty overnight, and that means it will polish up faster. And you'll see quite clearly where the runners have been. There is a shiny surface. Not that there's been a lot of runners down, but, but the more that go down, the shinier it will become. And that's part of it as well. It polishes off some of the frost on the track uh, yep. as the sleds go down. And training this week, it was pretty cold throughout the week, mm. so the athletes here are probably used to a much frostier track, so that's maybe why we saw um, a lot more skidding it happening, skidding. especially out yeah. of Wall and Snake and Sunny. So, because the, when the track is frostier, the sled sticks a lot more, and so you come out of a corner and the sled will just stick straight. But if it's less frosty, obviously you're going to have a, a lot more problems, especially with the back end when these monobobs, because unlike a two man, obviously you don't have the weight in the back of another person. Yeah, so the same deal for the monobob athletes in the paras as in the able-bodied competition it's about controlling that skittishness it's it's a it's a relatively light set and one of the things about samaritz is it does not have a lot of high g-force corners and particularly not early on in the run so until you get down to horseshoe you don't have the high g that helps the sled get pressed down onto the ice in the curves yep that's why you have to be very delicate around those top corners and really finishing your steers here is our first heat leader, Will Castillo. He's also our World Cup points leader. Two wins and a silver medal out of four starts so far this year. The man who earned the Purple Heart in the US Army in Afghanistan and uh, an Army bronze medal as well. He is a experienced and highly competitive slider. Fourth season of sliding. And... Uh, has habitually performed better in the USA than in Europe, but this season he's had a win in Lake Placid and a win in Innsbruck, and then a silver in Lake Placid and a fourth place in Innsbruck. So he could definitely be among our real favorites, Will Castillo, uh, Castillo from uh, the USA. Has not been a world championship medalist yet, but certainly on the uh, basis of that first run for half of our athletes. He, Corey Mapp, Nico Johan, Artis Tox, maybe Jonas Fry. It, it, it's funny because even in things like the two man and the four man, a third of a second back anywhere else would just be an unmanageable margin. Here, it's just one tiny error. It just, yeah, it, all of a sudden you can be up and then boom, you're, you're back down. You know, it's a, a really tricky track and. The start is a very important, but for these guys, obviously with the launcher, the start doesn't play so much of a difference, which is uh, fantastic here, because then it just becomes purely about the driving. Yep. But like you said, one small mistake, especially up the top of the track, can just uh, uh, kill yep. your speed the whole way down. The coaches at the start, the start of the week, were saying, yeah, if you get wall wrong, that could be eight or nine tenths and just wall, on that, just on that one corner. Yep, and wall is really, really, really tricky this year. It took a lot of athletes a long time to figure this out and still I still figuring it out exactly yeah. and I was just gonna say I was there at training yesterday and there's still some athletes still having trouble with it and so it's it's very interesting to see maybe not if you can do it perfect but if you can do it the best out of everybody I think that's the deal isn't it it's it's the, the person who makes fewest mistakes because this is a, a, a Samaritz track that is laden with trip wires it is it, there are hazards everywhere there's not a single corner that is easy and or straightforward so and what happens yeah. is that if you fix up a corner and then you're going into the next corner differently and then that's when you can make it and, and your next mistake and so it, like, this track is just con is a yeah. constant challenge and like doing DIY you fix one thing and it just pushes the mistake that pushes the, the damage to the next corner yeah exactly right because you you tidy one place up you've got a little bit more speed into the next corner so it's different from how it was the last time you, you got a different it. entry into exactly. the next corner corner and so then you have to adapt your steering and, but that's a great thing about Bob so you have to be really be on your toes the whole way and really looking um, at being adaptable to the different entries you're coming in different speeds you're coming in whether you're training in the morning whether you're uh, sliding in the morning whether you're sliding in the evening it, there's so many different elements that can affect your run so yeah. knowing this track and the more times you come here the more experience you get and so I'm sure especially the local people local athletes
athletes here, the Swiss athletes, they probably know this track the best out of everyone, but also the athletes who have been sliding the most, uh, people like Corey and Lonnie from Canada, who's just about to come up, and then you obviously have the Latvians. They've been sliding the longest. Oh, and there's Mariami and Manka. Yep, 2018 she's... Olympic champion, recently retired. Yes, and she's here as the um, German uh, professor, uh, experience, oh, what, what would you call it, Martin? They, she's commentating on the German um, tel uh, oh, okay. television. Okay, so yeah. Yep, so yep. She's doing your job for, for German TV. Yeah, exactly, there you go. that's right. <laughs> there you go. So the, the colour analyst, expert analyst. Uh, so yeah, oh, that was good. I haven't seen her since, well, actually <laughs> did, did the Olympics remotely as almost everybody did, so didn't see her in Beijing. I haven't seen her for a, a couple of seasons uh, in real life, but nice to see her round and about. Yeah, she's been uh, the professional analyst um, on the German TV this year. And I was watching the German TV and I was listening. I was like, who is that voice? And then and I found <laughs> out it was Mariama. So it's great to, that she's still involved in the sport. It's kind of addictive, isn't it? It's hard to just turn around and walk away when it's been part of your life for so long. So our second group then starts with the... Only female slider in this year's field, not the only female slider who's competing this season, but the only one who is here in a world championship. So Gabriela Napova for the Czech Republic will be first off. So we are ready to get ourselves back underway. The second half of heat one in the Paris Sports World Championships. As Ivo Fabriani said in the opening ceremony for the Worlds here, the first sport possibly in the entire world where a world championships has combined para and able-bodied athletes in the same track at the same facility at the same time and it's great how the sport is set up it means that females and males can compete together because, absolutely yep that's fantastic and it's great to see that gabrielle is out here it's about hands and eyes it's not about your physiognomy it's not about your weight or your power or your strength it's about driving the sled so uh, he, she did not race in north america she was 15th in a field of 22 sleds last time out in innsbruck in the european championships and uh, her motto, she says, is it's as important to look good as it is to go good. <laughs> so, uh, look good, feel good, run good. There you go. As John Morgan always says, if you dress like a team, you like like a team. 6.34, but a bit skiddy oh, out of the first, first corner. That first team got her there, so we'll see how, that, um, how she goes for the rest of the way down. She tidied that up neatly, didn't she? I mean, we've seen all week last week sleds just skidding all the way down those two straights little sideways out of wall and also sideways out of snake two there yep oh, but she got her straight out of sunny Ooh, tapping in nash and dixon lots of kids watching the action here oh she did well there she had a crash through uh, through training this week so she yep. did really well to get through horseshoe nice and quiet there yeah, she crashed it uh, twice in training. She said she's never crashed in Sam Rose before. But same road, the same roads this year has been tricky. There's been a lot mm. of tracks in the in the two man and four man and yep. and monobobs as well. Yep. Tenth best speed at the moment, but can she drive herself in ahead of David Yenavine? She does by 12 hundredths of a second. So that is the first of our second group of sliders. She drops up, pushes herself up into ninth place. I'm sure she's going to look back at that run and know that she can tidy up the top section yeah. there. Well, she won't need to, to even think about it, will she? Because she's been sitting there as the sled's been skittering away underneath her. She knows exactly where all that time has gone. And the tricky thing with these monobobs is that when once you start tapping away, it's like a ping pong ball and it just goes uh, from yeah. side to side and it can be really tricky to get a sled back online. But she did really well there out of horseshoe. Yeah into telephone, that corner there. There used to be a field telephone there. If you crashed, you'd ring the start and say, I've crashed. <laughs> Genuinely, this is Fabrizio Caselli from Italy. He's from Mugello, uh, a hand biker as well, started in 2018 and has been competing in the World Cup since 2019. And he is among probably Ten of our eighteen athletes who nominate Sam Ritz as his favourite track. Oh, tricky there. 
perhaps getting from snake one to snake two and then out of snake two. Yeah, you can love Sam Ritz. It won't necessarily love you back this year, though. Oh, certainly. I mean, I've had my experiences in the past here, and it's really, it can be quite a tricky track, even though it's a beautiful place to slide. Yeah. Ooh, nice line in Horseshoe, but telephone to Shamrock got very squirrely. Seventh best speed, he's coming back. You can start to see that the sun is starting to shine through the shades here, and so then that'll mean the track will be starting to quicken up a little bit. Couple of taps down the straight. Now, this is going to be quicker than Gabriela Napova. Does he overhaul his teammate Flavio Minardi, who was first out of the shed and is eighth? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So, 18 hundredths of a second ahead of Flavio Minardi. So, Fabrizio Caselli is now the top of our Italian trio. Again, rather too many skids for his liking, I'm sure. I'm loving the helmet. That's a fantastic helmet yeah. there. Let's see his line out of horseshoe. A little bit high on the exit here, so he flops off there. And then he obviously got pushed late into telephone and he, he came up on the end there. So see the shake of the head there. I'm sure he's going to go back and clean that up. South Africa's Michael Stevens from Joburg. Third season, having started in 2019. And actually, he met one of his fellow competitors, Christopher Stewart from Switzerland, who we'll see a little later in the run. They were kite surfing in Greece. And, and as uh, you can see uh, on the track here, there's a lot of little lines here, and that's what we were talking about before, that the track starts to smooth out the more the sleds run over the ice. Yeah. So Chris Stewart got him involved. We got the waves in the in wall and the tap out there, skidding from one to two. And then you get a bit of pressure in Sunny, gets you a chance to sort of straighten things up a bit, but down into Nash and Dixon. Oh, he's just got the back end, the back end's quite out of control here. Let's see how he goes in Horseshoe. Nice line through Horseshoe, very Good nice height. line. Probably one of the best we've seen so far. Yep. Kind of shortcuts Shamrock, but comes out top 10 speed. Coming into tree and then bridge. Nice line through there. Re he's really got some nice lines happening here. Ooh, pinged away into Gunter Sachs. We've seen a couple of the big sleds doing that as well. Yep, it's last what week. I'm, and that's what I was saying with these monobobs. If you start tapping here, you just continue to continue to go from side to side, and it can be quite frustrating to drive. Ten spot at the moment for Michael Stevens from South Africa. Tanya's third time in Samaritz, and I, I, <laughs> I bet it feels totally different. The two previous times, the track was a little more benign, and they're in a very different sled. Nice height there in Horseshoe. Really excellent line through Horseshoe there. Really, he will be very happy about that. Look at him, he comes quite down very quietly. But he got it in the nose on there just before going into gun to sacks there. So next up is Alvils Brantz, 59-year-old Latvian, lives close to the Finnish border. And certainly to talk to him, if I didn't know he was Latvian, I would have assumed automatically he was a Finn. He's got that very Finnish sing-song voice. 6.37 and a ooh, just a relatively clean run out of the first corner. Oh, he's getting, just getting a bit too close to the wall there and getting bumped away. Tied for the lead, though, as he comes into wall. Not too bad out of there. Nice going into Sunny. You really start to build your uh, your speed into Sunny there. Like you were saying, you get a little bit of pressure, but you got to be very quiet in this part because it's actually quite flat. I'm not sure if you can see it too much in the TV. Oh, you got he hit there before telephone. Haven't seen that too much today. Silver medalist in the World Championships in Park City in 2016. Nice lines now, though. Not got the greatest speed through the forest. Not too bad going into Martino down the bottom. And look at that. That's had a real effect on the speed as well. He's come Certainly. right back up. And at the line, ninth, ninth place. place. All right, well, there's a first heat for Alvils Brandt, which he will look to try and tidy up in the second. 
I think if he just tidies up that top section a little bit more, because honestly, his bottom section wasn't too bad mm. there. So if he tidies up that top section, I'm sure he's going to have a lot more speed going into the nice bottom section that he had. Didn't race in Lake Placid, so last weekend in Innsbruck was his first weekend on ice this year, and a brand new sled. A bit too high off the end of Horseshoe there, and the sled just flops down. Now, one of the original uh, gang of, of crazy sliders who took up this sport, along with the likes of Corey Mapp, Lonnie Bissonette, the most decorated of all our sliders, and out of the first corner, straight as a die. He is so experienced, and we talked about this before we came on air, you've talked about it since, that having more and more and more and more experience in the ice allows you to adapt faster, and that's Certainly. gonna be the key. Especially here in St. Moritz, you obviously, the track changes slightly each year, so the more experience you have here, the more you, the better, quicker you're gonna be able to navigate the corners here. Three attempts to get round Sunny there. It's a sort of three pressure corner. A little bit squarely in the front there. Lonnie was the one that was telling me that the runners are a little bit thicker than what they're used to in these new sleds. And he's saying it's quite tricky to be able to run because obviously when the, the runners get a bit fatter, you get less and less control. Hovering around the top three at the moment. Fifth best speed as he comes out of the forest into these fast four right-handers. Really important to try and avoid the wall here. Top four speed, 130 kilometers an hour. Really good speed from Lonnie Bissonette. And where is he at the line? He's in full spot, only 1700s. Oh, look, fantastic. Well, they, that's the, that's that's the, the Canadian, Canadian team. boys. I saw them there at the start cheering for him. It's great that they've come down and, and provided him with some good support. So Lonnie Bissonette in fourth place. I'm sure he's going to look at that run. He's very experienced, so he's going to know where he can tidy that up. And if he can keep the sled a little bit more under control at the top section and away from the walls in this bottom section, I'm sure he's going to be able to tidy that up. Listen, in the four-man competition that starts on Saturday, if the top four are separated by 1,700s after the first heat, we'll know we've got a race on our hands. We've oh, got a certainly. really tight race here. And Sebastian Westin of Sweden could well put the cat among the pigeons as well. Again. Bit of a skid around that top section. And like you were saying before, it's the the velocity here is really important. Your start time can look good, but if you navigate that first kink um, with a little bit of a skid or you're too uh, rough around there, and that's, see, that's what I mean, the, the time goes away there before the first corner. World Championship bronze medalist behind Jonas Fry, the gold medal winner, and Lonnie Bissonette, the silver last time that the Worlds were here for the Parasport athletes in 2021. So he's got good memories of this track. Not too bad through the flatter section of the track here. Nice line around Horseshoe, really quiet there, doing a fantastic job. Only 12th best speed, maybe just driving a little too much. Too many skids coming in as well. And that's just the little errors that maybe you don't feel when you're in the sled, but when you look back at the video and you see, you're like, oh, that's where my speed's going, just from the little skids that are happening out of the, uh, the corners. So 14th best speed. This is going to leave him down at the tail of the field, not where he wants to be at all. 13th at the line, 114.90. And those little mistakes that you make out of each corner, they can just accumulate all the way down and it can just really uh, hurt your speed a lot. Well, he was saying yesterday that he's definitely not 100% yet with these sleds, has not really got his head around them at all. They can be very tricky. I remember my first years in these Accent sleds. Um, everybody was uh, really struggling to learn how to navigate them because obviously if you're used to driving one uh, certain type of sled and you move to another, you've got to have a time to adapt to them. 2018 Crystal Globe winner from Austria, Hermann Elmar, started in 2017, so this is his sixth season, and up until 2019 was part of Austria's uh, Olympic handball, Paralympic Ooh, handball that team. First kink there just got him a little bit and he went skidding out of there. I beg his pardon, wheelchair basketball he was. Rollerball, 6.38 getaway. 
Oh, and Wall, the exit of Wall there just got him a little bit. See how he goes through the snakes. Not too bad there. Nice line through Sunny, and he came out just a little tap there, but not too bad. Only 1700s back, top five sleds covered by 2400, so he's right in the frame at the moment, and, and that was a great nice run. Very nice line. Second best speed, that's what coming cleanly out of Horseshoe does for you. Certainly, and he's doing a fantastic job here, really staying close to the walls as he comes out. Building up a lot of speed. He's doing a fantastic job here. Top two run right now. This is excellent from Hermann Almauer of Austria. Fifth best speed at the bottom, but he'll be right in the top three or four. And at the line, it is second. second. Oh, 400's back. We have a race on our hands here. It's really fantastic. He did a really, really good job. After Horseshoe, honestly, there was minimal mistakes and he was rewarded for it. You, you get that Mario Kart power up there, don't you? You just dive from height. It's like 15 feet up and you dive down. If you hit nothing on the way down, it just gives you so much speed. You can't really see that on TV, but that corner is quite high. And to come around there and have such a beautiful line, you come down with such speed. And if you do, if you navigate it really well, you're just rewarded at the bottom. Well, it must have felt very good for him and Almeyer. And he is in second place now. Christopher Stewart. Chris started in 2015. Another of the athletes recruited by Fritz Burkhardt here. He was married just down the valley in Cellarina. His wife was working here. And he now lives in Switzerland. 6.38 getaway. Best. Really quiet in the top section here. Really good job. Yeah, best velocity of all. Tied for the lead with Will Castillo. Very nice out of there. Bit of a skid, but not a hit. So he's hopefully he's rewarded for that. Ironically, when he was a teenager, he was scouted to go and do luge in the States. And he went, no, that's far too set insane. I'll never do that. So look where he's ended up. Really good at section there. Not too bad. Little bit of skids, but not much hitting. So he's doing a fantastic job here. Really keeping the speed alive, isn't he? Second best speed. He's closing in on leader Will Castillo. Don't forget the top two, 400s apart. Top three, 400s apart. Oh, and he's jumped into the lead here. Top speed, doing a fantastic job. What a great run from Chris Stewart to the Swiss leads with a brand new track record. Really good, and you can see all the Swiss fans <laughs> there are very happy about that run, very happy to have their local athlete in the lead. Wow, and he really stretched his legs in the final run down to the line there. Went from within a couple of hundreds, he was 1,200s back, and then 2,100s in front, and that's being clean down at the bottom of the track. Certainly, and the top wasn't too bad too. A little bit of skidding, but not much tapping. That's what we were talking about before. It's about minimizing the mistakes. If like wall is quite tricky but if you can navigate it the best you're obviously going to be rewarded for it and our final slider in our first heat of the parasport worlds is austin parker from the usa only in his first season of competitive sliding and he's on the world championship start line 637 that's a good run through the corner as well keeps that speed alive chris stewart well, he'll be able to hear the track announcer because pretty, it's so quiet here. Unlike any other concrete ice canal, you can hear the track announcer oh, going certainly. down. Oh, certainly. And you can often hear if your pilot talks in the in the sled. You can often your brakeman can often hear what's going on in <laughs> in the front seat there too. Presumably, they need a bleep button most of the time. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> or here, especially on the long. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come, 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 come. Good. Nice exit there. And clean from Telephone into Shamrock as well. Clean through Devil's Dyke. That will help keep the speed alive. Very good section there. Probably one of the best we've seen so far. He's, OK, first year of competitive sliding. He's really got a handle on these sleds. He has definitely got the feel for this. Not too bad. Really good bottom section. But his speed is not quite there. It's going to be a top 10 run at the line. Where is he? He, ah, oh, it's not. Lost speed at the bottom. He went from ninth on the splits out of the forest down to 14th. 
nevertheless a 1.14.25 and he makes his world championship debut in his first season of sliding so austin parker Navy veteran from Hanford in California. He was telling me yesterday that his uh, wife is back home eight months pregnant. And he and Rachel are both hoping that the baby just hangs on at least another week or so. Oh, fingers crossed for yeah. him then. Really nice height through horseshoe there. Comes down maybe a little bit too quick. And he can get a pushed away just before telephone. Oh, and a bit of a skid there, but so maybe that's where his speed went missing there. Need to let it climb onto telephone maybe a fraction earlier, and then the, the tail will follow the nose. But he is down and done. 18 sleds have completed the first of four heats of the Parasport World Championships. Well, until Chris Stewart came down and, and slightly spoiled it, we had a very tight lead group with uh, Will Castillo now 2100s back and Herman Almeyer and Corey Mapp tied to the 100th, just 400s behind, and Nico Johan 100th behind them. Don't count out Lonnie Bissonnet, Artus Klotz, Jonas Frey, the double reigning world champion, because everybody will make mistakes. Look how close some of these battles are. Uh, Bob Balkan, Fabrizio Caselli, 100th of a second. Alves Brands is right with them as well. He's only 1100s back. So there's all sorts of battles still to go. And of course, three more heats. Another heat for all of our athletes today and two more tomorrow. So we have barely got started with this. Chris Stewart has the lead right now. Switzerland have taken World Championship gold for the last two seasons with Jonas Frey. Chris Stewart is the man who leads for the Swiss at home in San Moritz. And like you said, Martin, four heats, a lot can happen within four heats. So yep. consistency is going to be key here. And especially with those close battles here, I'm sure we'll see athletes moving up and down the leaderboard here. And, but Chris Stewart is off to a great start. But I, you never know in St. Moritz, it's a really long track and all of a sudden, boom, somebody can be up there at the start. So it's going to be, we have an exciting race on our hands. Yeah, we definitely do. And it's going to be all about confidence building, isn't it? The sleds are back up at the top and we will go again in four minutes. So Group A started on the uh, coldest, slowest ice, and they will go last on what will be less cold and less slow ice, but less grippy as well. So Group B goes second and then third. And tomorrow, it'll be the other way around. Group B will go first and last, and Group A will do back-to-back -back runs in the middle there. So that's the way that will work over the four heats of our Parasports World Championships. Yep, so the athletes who have just finished now, they will come back up to the top and they have to quickly get ready. And that's, sometimes oh, it's not too bad. You don't have too much pretty time. Pretty much sitting in the sled. Yeah, they're... Yep, they don't have too much time to think about it. Can be a good one or a bad thing. So we're going to yeah. see how, how it goes. Well, <laughs> quite a lot of them were saying actually that the most dodgy thing in the entire weekend is actually the trip back up on the back of the camion. Oh, I can imagine, because they're still strapped into their sleds, aren't they? They, yep. they they're strapped into the sleds, and and these guys who travel up and down the the road of the side of the track, they they get some speed happening. So, the Americans were saying it's like you got Mario Andretti driving. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they do. I mean, yes, they they know what they're doing, and they know that they're under pressure. Time to get the athletes back to the top because the sleds are needed again, which is obviously not the case when, uh, you know, when you, you guys are racing in the women's race uh, this weekend, in the four-man race this weekend, everybody has their own sled, so that's very different. And we have a lot of time between heats uh, to think about what we need to do mm. and to get to review video. And so these athletes, they don't really, they're not going to have a lot of time to do that. But like I said, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe they can get into a bit of a flow and yeah. realize the mistakes that they made in that in the first heat and go again and correct them for the second. And Group A will get a chance to sort of talk to the coach and have a look at a bit of video. Group B won't today, but Group B will tomorrow because they'll go first and fourth. Yep. And Group A will be in the kind of hurry up offense, stay in the sled, straight to the top, back on the ice and off you go. Yep. And again, you know, for the coaches of, of the men and women's bobsleigh teams, it's a unique proposition to have the, the para-athletes here as well and to be able to give that advice and to, and to offer your knowledge as well. So so this it's, it's a real good discipline, I think, for, for both sides, is that the para-athletes benefit from a lot more experience coming in from the other coaches. And the coaches are learning something from the para-athletes 
which also applies to, to the women's monobob because it is the same equipment. And, and it's fantastic to see that the, those are the Czech boys there. They'll yeah. be sliding on the weekend. It's fantastic to see that, um, uh, that our four-man teams are out there supporting our para-athletes. And it, like you said, you know, you're gonna, they're getting a lot more experience from the coaches that they maybe not cross lines with. Because yeah. like, like we said before, we don't often cross paths with the Parabob um, athletes. So they're getting more and more experience with maybe more uh, experienced coaches. Uh, but you've got some fantastic coaches out there, you know. Like I said before, Brittany Reinbolt's there. She's a very, very experienced pilot, be competed for the USA for many years, and she seems like she's having a great time with these athletes. Yeah. Hegers Masklans, the former Latvian slider, is uh, their go-to guy as well for advice on the tracks before and during the competitions. If they need any advice, he'll be more than happy to offer it. And as you said, yeah, the likes of Brittany uh, travelling with the athletes this season. And Edgars has been around for a long time. He was actually uh, coaching in my first um, my first monobob uh, school. So he's been around for a long time, helping a lot of athletes develop and come into the sport. So it's fantastic to, still to see him around. Talked with him yesterday, got some information about the sport. Um, he loves to talk about bobsleigh. And, um, yeah, he's just a, such a great asset to um, this discipline. He drank the Kool-Aid, didn't he, years and years ago. Yeah, and... Uh, still involved and that's one of the great things about the sport is that keeping that knowledge involved just passes it on from generation to generation so our second group then group b they go in the same order as they did in the first heat so effectively we've got 10 to 18 and then one to nine in fact not effectively that's exactly what we have uh, so it will be will castillo of the usa who goes off last it is gabriela napova of the czech republic who goes off first she was first on the ice in this group anyway in group b so she gets the first opportunity to put a second run down and to try and learn from what she did in the first you can see the sled being eased backwards and forwards that's what the athletes will do anyway with the sled to stop the runners getting too cold or getting stuck to the ice and that's also the launcher um calibrating how much the sled weighs so it yep. can uh, launch the athletes off so they have a relatively similar start time so she is ready to go. Dibanis Fry, the track is clear. And our second heat is underway with the Czech Republic's Gabriela Napova. 115-11, her first run. And a 6.32 start for her this time. And the first kink just got her there a little bit, but she's now got the sled running quite straight. And again, when you go down for the second trip in the day, you've got more of a feel for how the ice is driving on race day compared to what it was like in training. Certainly, and it can, as the day go, goes on, it can get more and more slicker, so maybe we'll see a little bit more skidding happening if the athletes haven't adapted to the ice quickly enough. I think what we might see is quite a few battles tightening up, and maybe at the top of the pack as well. Great to see so many school kids on the day out here. Big hype from Gabriella, lands it nicely. A little shy off telephone, maybe, but... Not too bad out of Devil's Dyke there. She's really got this bottom section dialed in. She's not really doing a great job. A little tap into little tap. the Gunter Sachs curve. Quite a lot of sleds are taking that. They can't get on cleanly. 124.8 through the final couple of corners, 77 and a half miles an hour. And, and we have all the boys there, fantastic support there for Gabriella. Well, she had a 115.11 in the first heat and a 115.25 in the second. So as the track is becoming a little less frosty, maybe we are going to see a lot more skidding going on. Really nice line out of there. She's really got that dialed in there, especially because throughout the week she had a few crashes there. So I'm sure she's a little bit nervous coming around. If she was a little bit lower there, she wouldn't have that hit going into telephone. And Protago, we haven't talked, seen much action out of there. We have certainly had a lot of action there <laughs> in the training when athletes first went down the track yeah, this week. we have. Fabrizio Caselli next up for Italy. Six thirty-eight getaway for him. 
I just love his helmet. His yeah. helmet is so colourful. You, you can't miss him out there on the track there. <laughs> He's already a second up. A little bit high there off the wall, which made him go a little bit skiddy. Not, and like we said before, as the track starts to um, get more and more sleds over, maybe it gets a little bit slicker and we're going to see a bit more skidding happening and athletes are going to be trying to minimise that as much as possible. Yeah, the ice gets a little more polished and you can imagine from your own experience on ice exactly what that feels like. Even less grip. Top speed for Fabrizio Caselli. But these athletes just went, they were they were the last in that first heat, so maybe they're going to have a little bit more of an idea of how the track's going. It's going to be interesting to see how that Group A goes because they went on that early ice and they're obviously going to have um, a, the opportunity to slide a little bit later. 81 miles now at the bottom and a 113.58. That's quite a handy improvement for Fabrizio. His first heat was a 114.06. And he's put a fair bit of distance between himself and Gabriella there. Yeah, he's got about half a second quicker on his second run. And that's what happens when you tidy up the skids. Not too bad. A bit of a lower line around Horseshoe there. But he did a great job being quite quiet off there and he would have been, and he obviously has been rewarded for it. So next up from South Africa, Mike Stevens. Third time at racing here. As well as sliding himself, he runs a non-profit organization back home called Jumping Kids that uh, helps provide schooling and funding for kids and has also helped send kids to the Paralympics in Rio where they set records and claimed medals and most recently to Tokyo, where they claimed their first gold medals. So not only enjoying the sport, but putting a huge amount back in. Not too bad through that top session, bit skiddy. I think anybody who gets away without skids is going to be feeling like the track just loves them here. A little nudge away into Horseshoe. Nice line. Very though. nice line through there. Yeah. Good line off Telephone and Shamrock as well. Not a very, Just a little bump, not really a hit. Now, this is looking much more like a two-seat sled, isn't he? He's got real control here. He's very much got the feel for it this morning. Not too bad. Just a little bit early off those bottom corners. Second best speed at the bottom. And he is away behind Fabrizio Caselli. Fabrizio had a hell of a run. Yes, he did. Really put that much distance between. Now then, what might be a benefit for Mike Stevens here is the consistency. First heat, 114. 114.62, and he's come down 114.09. So he's sliced out half a second from his uh, first run as well. And that's the key thing with World Championships. You've got four runs that you have to um, uh, participate in, and so consistency is key. And they all count. You can't give them away. Look at them loving it. <laughs> so next up is Latvia's Alfons Brands. Temp season is sliding but the tallest athlete in the field and says these sleds are a real squeeze to get in. 6.36, same as Mike Stevens. Real nice for the top section here. Doing fantastic job, just nudging the sled away from the corners there. Now, he was only 700 behind our current leader, Fabrizio Caselli, in the first heat. So let's see how their two runs compare. Nice exit out of Sunny, really good there. Oh, but a little bit of tap out of Nash there. Oh, very low throughout Horseshoe. Smooth, though. Only the third best speed. Caselli was fastest in the forest. Nice work coming really smoothly off of these bottom corners. And again, at the higher speed here, you've got a little bit more centrifugal force pushing the sled into the ice, makes it a little harder, uh, easier to control. 
definitely. 129.6, 80.5 bars now. He will be behind Kiseli, but by 1400s. <laughs> Eurus on the left the and Fiesta's guys. on the right. There are social media team. Fiesta's the photographer. Yeah, supporting, supporting the Latvians. The Latvians. You can take the boy out of Latvia, you can't take the Latvian out of the boy. <laughs> so what did I say the gap between them was before? It was 700s and it is now out to 14. So actually Fabrizio Caselli has opened up the advantage over Alfons Brandt. This, they're all just so happy to be here. It's so great to see. Well, it's a fun thing to do, isn't it? I mean, it, it is exhilarating, exciting, adrenaline-filled. And look, you got the Canadian boys back there cheering Lonnie yep. on. And in fact, it was Canadian driver Christine Smith who dragged him into bobsleigh. He was doing uh, one leg of recreating a famous around the world wheel by a Canadian called Rick Hansen, who did a lap of the globe in 1987, 47,000 kilometers in a wheelchair. Wow. And Lonnie was on a 1,400 kilometer leg. Uh, in a recreating part of that in the middle of Canada, and Christine Smith said, hey, you should come and drive bobsleds. Oh, really? Like you did. Fantastic. Yeah. And look at him now. He's actually doing a really great job. Just a bit of a, a tap between Nash and Dixon there. A bit of a lower line there, but he's still, got, he's still up. He's six tenths up. Speed not quite as good as Fabrizio Caselli, but he is opening up the margin at the moment on the Italian. Really nice lines here, doing a fantastic job. He had a few skids, but not much tapping. World champion in 2019 in Lake Placid, 2016 in Park City. He's got three silver medals as well. Third best speed. I think he's still going to be able to hold him off. Yep. Fantastic. 113.54 compared to 113.56 in the first heat. So two hundredths of a second difference between the two runs. And while some of the others have hacked half a second out of their, their run, his are both, I mean, two hundredths difference down, 36, 100, 3,700 metres of ice. That's ridiculously tight. Yeah, for sure. And, but Lonnie is one of these athletes who hasn't slid in these um, new Accent sleds all that often. He actually was, this is the first time this week that he slid in these sleds. Yep. So. He's, he's probably having to adapt to these sleds run by run, getting more experience as he goes down. So we'll, hopefully we'll see him improve as the yeah. week goes on. Because Lonnie did not race these sleds last week, their first time out in Innsbruck. Sebastian Westin did, though, for Sweden. Now, he didn't race bad. in North America, so this is only his second race of the season. Keeping, trying to keep the sled nice and straight there. Heading into wall, not too bad. Really nice through the snakes. Less skiddy it looks than in his first heat. Really good out of Sunny. Nice work in the flatter section of the track. Bit of a lower line, but it didn't get the flop off. Best speed of all. He's coming back. Doing a really good job. He's a little bit behind at the moment. Well, his first heat was quite loose, and that means the remaining three, he's going to be catching, catching, catching. So, you know, he has to be better than the other guys. Fourth best speed at the bottom. Yeah, he lost a bit at the bottom in the first run as well with a few skids. And across the line, a 113.29 compared to a 114.90. And he drops down to fourth here. But actually, what did he do? He, he was uh, 1.6 seconds quicker than his first heat. So that is going to vault him way up the order. Now then, he goes, right, here we go. Bit of a lower line. We've seen different variations of lines through Horseshoe here. So he's taking his blue Swedish jacket off. So he's obviously hot and uh, ready to rock after the first heat. So Sebastian Western of Sweden, currently lying in fourth place. And next up is Herman Almeyer. 
now. He haven't had a really great first run. He needs to absolutely nail it to go on again in the second to stay in that lead group. And again, quiet. exactly, looks like he's actually got a, a, a breaker in the back because the sled is really under control here. When the exit of wall just got him there a little bit. Not too bad, bit of, bit of a skid off snake too, but a lot of athletes had that really great out of Sunny there. Heading into Horseshoe. Lovely line through there, bit late onto telephone, but very nice out of Shamrock. One of the best we've seen there. Was in Austria's. Uh, Paralympic wheelchair hand uh, basketball team and went to a, a training camp and, and thought, I'll just have one go in a bobsleigh. And uh, basketball has taken a back seat to bobsledding. He got hooked immediately. Second best speed at the bottom here. He's extending his advantage over Lonnie Bissonnet to a 4600 uh, margin. Nice. Yeah, 113.21, 113.43 in the first heat. So again, he finds nearly a quarter of a second. Nice work. I think he's going to be very happy with that. Yeah, he's going to be very well placed at the end of day one, isn't he? That's two good runs. We saw the train rattling over the bridge there. We go under the railway bridge a couple of times in the run. Next up, Chris Stewart from Switzerland, our first heat leader with a 113-18. Put himself 21 hundreds ahead of the pack. Let's see if his second run is equally good. Again, nice work. You can't argue with that. If anybody in the women's bobsleigh race gets a better exit than that out of the first dink, I don't know how they've done it. Certainly. It's a lot of pressure for these Swiss athletes competing here at home. They have a lot of support here. And so it's very, I'm sure he's wanting to really lay down a, a nice lead here for, for the first day. Well, for him, he can almost be sleeping in his own bed. I don't think he is. I think he's here in a hotel with some of the other athletes. You saw him at dinner the other night down in St. Morris. But, but uh, yeah, very close to home for him. So the run isn't as clean as his first one. Maybe he's thinking a little bit too much, but he's got this bottom section. He's starting to get the sled going yeah. now. Look at him go. Here we go. And you hear it, don't you, when the sled comes past the camera, that there's no noise at all apart from the wind rush. 131.5, 81.7 miles an hour. Comfortably the fastest at the bottom. Clean between Martino and Portago. 113.27. Very nice. He's held on to his lead there. So we're going to have to see how it um, matches up to the guys that are in the Group A um, athletes. But yeah, very, very good first day for Chris. And that was only nine hundredths of a second slower than his previous run, over 1,850 metres. So he's losing half a hundredth per metre, which is about a quarter of an inch. Tiny tap there, but it just rubs you of speed as it bounces you across the track. So our first heat leader has another good run on his hands. And next up is Parker, uh, Austin Parker, I beg your pardon, from the USA. Austin was the last man down in the first heat. So he is now the midway point. Great job through that first kink there. If he's driving that kink in only his first season of racing, and don't forget, that includes two races in Lake Placid and two in Innsbruck, and that's it so far. And he's got a bright future. For sure, certainly he does. A bit high off there, getting two taps leading into the snakes. Not too bad off the snakes there. He's got a very... He's got a good eye here. Oh, but he got a little bit of... His nose got hooked on the loose start there. Sideways out of Sunny. Needs to be clean out of Horseshoe, and he is. Not too bad coming through Devil's Dyke here into Nameless. Up into Tree. Building your speed as you come down into Bridge. Leap. 
And then Gunter Sachs here, nice little oh. bit skiddy. Yeah, a little unfortunate drift there coming off Sachs. This is going to put him ahead of Sebastian Westin in sixth place. No, just behind him. So ahead of Mike Stevens of South Africa. At 1.14.29, he was on target to move up a spot or two. But at 1.14.25 first heat, 1.14.29 second heat. Again, that is consistency. And for his first year of driving, you, maybe you're just here experiencing the atmosphere, experiencing mm -hmm. what a world champs is like. Obviously, you would want to do well, but I'm sure he's just here and he's loving being here in St. Moritz because who doesn't? Yeah, absolutely. So two very different tracks. Lake Placid is a, a busy driver's track. Innsbruck is a little bit more like this. It's a much more... Uh, relaxed driving style a gliders track and here well normally you'd say it's a gliders track as well but you kind of have to be on top of it this year no certainly there is corners here where you really have to drive out and that can uh, get uh, athletes um hooked up on the ends well, chris stewart is our first heat leader and he leads after the first group of athletes or second group of athletes have gone down again leads by a slightly reduced margin of 1900s over herman elmar and molly Bissonette drifting a little further away 6500s back and there is chris stewart <laughs> and there on the opposite side of the valley to samaritz is martus moragel great uh, opportunity to go up there and do a bit of sightseeing go up on the uh, insanely steep funicular railway and then just get fabulous views of the mountains all around you chris stewart then leads from him and almeyer with lonnie bissonette in third fabrizio caselli uh, alvis brunts and sebastian westin rounding out the top half dozen there and we still have our second group of athletes to go and they are waiting at the top they were first out of the start gate and we'll go down last in this second heat. And tomorrow the positions will be reversed. He who was fast should, should, first shall be last today. And uh, the group that went back to back in the middle, Group B of athletes, they will go first and last tomorrow morning because we're back on air at the same time. 0900 local, 0800 GMT. For those of you watching in North America, 0300 Eastern. So if you, <laughs> so uh, uh, Krista Parker's wife, uh, Austin Parker's wife uh, in California, <laughs> it's still yesterday at some stage, late yesterday. He, she's probably not awake to be watching. Great to see all the little kids out here getting to experience what a world championship bobsleigh event is like. And the mascot there, by the way, is the Horned Oryx, which is the mascot of Graubunden, which is this canton, this region of Switzerland, in which Samaritz sits, and Davos as well, I believe, and Kur, the big uh, main town down in the valley. And there is Motus Moragel, little hotel up there. And uh, you see it zigzagging down the hillside. There is a, a natural luge track as well. You can rent a sled there at the top and come down. Uh, highly entertaining during the day, even more entertaining at night. And uh, yeah, can be, uh, can be quite uh, dodgy. Uh, one of our engineers in the truck has done it this week. And yeah, and a lot of athletes... Broke his have, hand. Yeah, that's not an <laughs> uncommon thing to hear. There's a lot of athletes yep. that have gone up there and wanted to experience it, but then have gone and got injured themselves. So it's certainly something that I haven't done, especially while I've been here competing. And not while you're competing. No, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll come back when I'm retired and I'll give it a go then. Or you could, yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, you're racing last thing on Sunday evening, so you're going to have to wait all the way till then for the uh, Omega race. Yes. When you will be exp experiencing the sleds here and this starting mechanism because the, the, the four girls who are driving are going to, they're, they're, there are four guys, four girls and four para athletes. So you already know what the sleds are like because yes. you race them regularly anyway and you have done since Mono was introduced. Yep. But you normally push your own sled 
jump in and then get driving, for the first time you'll be experiencing that push start. So that's going to be quite entertaining as well. I mean, I was talking to Kaylee Humphreys about this and we were saying there's going to be a few things that are different about mm -hmm. um, us competing in this Omega race compared to um, uh, competing in our normal sleds because we adjust um, the steering uh, to how we like to drive, but we can't do that in these sleds. Yep. So um, we're going to... what you get. Exactly. We're going to get in these sleds for the first heat, which is going to be a training run. And um, we, we're going to be experiencing it for the first time too. But what I'm very excited to see is how the men go in these monobobs yeah. <laughs> because this is going to be very interesting. They're always talking um, and saying, oh, oh, come on, guys, why can't you control this? And I'm just like, I'm waiting for you guys to get down to the bottom of the track and see how they, see how you handle it. Yeah, that video is going to be well worth watching. Uh, definitely see how the guys deal with it. And again, the sleds will be weighted so that they're pretty much the same weight for everybody. So. Yep, they're going to weigh the, the heaviest man and then um, make sure that we're all um, relatively so is that even. do we think? Oh, I think so. <laughs> Either him or Michy Vokes. We're not too sure. So we're um, so we'll have to see one of the big boys, see how much they weigh, and then we'll um, all have our weights relatively even. Apparently, Brad Hall is heavier than Justin Cripps. Is he so, now? <laughs> so okay, we'll rescue, Brad. We'll rescue Cripps from under that bus and throw Brad under it. <laughs> That'll, that'll be entertaining. Very definitely. entertaining. And and then also you obviously have the runners because we can we can change our runners when mm -hmm. it comes to um, uh, our racing. We can select if we want to have thicker runners, if we want to have thinner runners, but obviously we're all going to be sliding on the same runners. It is I, like going indoor go-karting, isn't it? Yeah, Everybody a little bit. complains that the other guy's got the fastest car. Oh, you had the fastest sled. Uh -huh. Nuh-uh, that's not how it's going to be. <laughs> They're all the same here and all on the same runners and same weight and same driving. And so it's all, again, it's going to be like Parabob. It's going to mm -hmm. be all about the driving and we're going to really see. And I hope some of the women are going to be able to challenge the men. Sad sight down there at the bottom is Lara Nolter's pink van, which has been there overnight. She crashed in training and uh, was whisked off to the hospital with her brake woman. They, I think, are both A-OK. -okay. Haven't heard from Rene Spies this morning, uh, but hopefully they'll be fit to compete. The Olympic champion, of course, in women's bobsleigh. And the women's bob starts tomorrow afternoon and then continues on Saturday morning. So they get two heats in the afternoon, two in the morning. See, the wind is picking up. That's not great news for the track either. Warm, well, yeah, not minus 20. Uh, <laughs> so for Sam Ritz, warm wind will not help the track survive too well for the rest of the weekend. But it has been, the, the track workers here have been doing a fantastic yeah. job of keeping the, the track in the top conditions. Beginning of the year, um, at Christmas time, they had a lot of troubles here with the warmer weather and they were really struggling to get the track um, in good condition. I came here for training and we were planning on training here for seven days and I only got three. Yeah. And they're only five runs because they were minimising the amount of sleds going down the track and so it's really great and they've done such hard work here each year this track is made um brand new out of snow and so they obviously heavily rely on the weather and um it was really quite warm here yeah. in europe at christmas time and so Very mild, wasn't they, it? yeah they did a great job to have the sled in such um, the track in such good conditions yeah north america was as as deep winter and as snowy and as uh, uh, and uh, as white as you want and then here in europe it, it was actually quite grassy here until a couple of weeks ago and is starting to melt away as well. So all of our officials and, uh, and helpers wearing their uh, World Championship yellow and blue jackets, thanks to them and all the other coaches and team members who have made all of this possible and the track workers as well, as you said, have been, they've, they've really earned their, their money this year. The track was built in late November and uh, a very warm start to the winter has made it quite hard to keep alive. That's the horseshoe bar. Actually, if the camera pulls back, you can see that there's there's a bar. Then we've got this platform out front where the kids are enjoying a little bit of Jaeger tea. But there's a massive grandstand being built over the entire cafe there. So I'm sure that's going to be packed terrace. on the weekend. Certainly. It'll be rammed. It will be rammed. And everywhere we look around, you can see on the left-hand side there the end of uh, the ski runs. You can see the the lift going up there from uh, Inchellarina. There's half a dozen uh, lifts up from the town in Samaritz and across the valley. Ski runs everywhere you look.
Now, spent the spectacular views here. And I love watching new athletes come here to St. Moritz yeah. because their eyes are just like wide open. They're just, their breath is taken away from the amazing views that they have here. Well, there is a faller in the Cresta run. So one of our Navy athletes. Uh, the Cresta, of course, runs down in almost parallel to the bobsleigh track from uh, uh, the top road where you come into the bobsleigh track here. Uh, the Cresta Run, which has also been running for well over a century. And if That's... people don't know what Cresta is, they need to look it up on YouTube because well, if, they if, have if some if amazing skeleton, footage. Then that's where Cresta came from. In the Olympic Games here in 28 and 48, the Cresta Run was an Olympic discipline. Um, now the best of the athletes, the fastest athletes who go from, from top, which is up by the main road above the clubhouse, they do use a variety of the modern skeleton sled. Uh, when you learn to, to, to slide, you start at Junction, which is where the clubhouse is, on the traditional old sleds, which are big, heavy things with a movable seat. So you lie on a seat pad and start off with your hands in front of you, wrestling it round the corners. And then gradually, as you get a little less rubbish, they allow you to move forward. And then your head is out front. And then, oh boy, you're not going even probably one kilometre an hour quicker, but because your brain is stuck out there and there's nothing to protect it, your head is going, wow! And so, you, yeah. That's... No, they're, they're, those guys are mad. I'll stick to my sled, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I did that in 1981 when I came for my first Worlds here, and uh, some of the sliders there were also competing in the polo on the frozen lake down at the bottom. So it was a bunch of Argentine polo players who were also madder than a box of frogs. Oh, it's a, that Apollo. I haven't seen it, but I've seen footage of it, and man, it is a, a hell of an experience. Well, Apollo's a hell of an experience, but then you throw in a, a snowy, icy lake, and it's even more dramatic. Yeah, certainly. And in fact, that was that was all in question as well because it took a, it takes a long time for the ice to freeze to sort yep. of a, a meter and a half or two meters thick. And uh, they and at Christmas time it wasn't. Mm. It was it was not um, yeah. frozen at all. And we, everyone who was here, we were like, wow, is this actually going to happen? If if the weather doesn't work, are we going to have um, uh, world championships here with a, a, a track that's going to hold together the whole time? But like we Christian. said, the the track workers have done a fantastic job, and thank thank God to the weather gods out there. <laughs> In the blue jacket, right in the centre of the shot, legendary commentator John Morgan, the only man in the Cool Runnings film who played himself. <laughs> Fact. Really? Oh, yep. I didn't know that. And still gets a royalty check from Disney once a quarter, and he says we go out for a hundred dollar dinner on our fifty dollar <laughs> royalty check. So, yeah, Amazing. no, played himself in Cool Runnings. He was uh, the analyst for the US TV in the '88 games in Calgary when the Jamaicans. Uh, uh, competed and Trinidad and Tobago competed as well yeah this sort of uh, little known fact uh, but uh, yeah, he played himself in the Disney movie Cool Runnings yeah I was sitting next to him yesterday and he was telling me all stories about uh, different world championships has yeah. been a, he's been around for a very very long time and it's so great when I often don't get to sit up there and, and talk with um, the different coaches who have been around for years and years yeah. um, and even with John Morgan there he was telling me such fantastic stories even about my coach Pierre Luders and oh, everything yeah. that's um <laughs> and every oh, what his time as an athlete so it was so great to hear all these stories I got a lot of dirt on Pierre which I love well, well one of my favorite Pierre stories uh actually features his coach when he was sliding for Canada uh, a guy from Dresden called Gert Grimmer mm -hmm. so the world championships in Koenigsee Gert said if you win this I will jump in the lake. Did he? Yeah. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> Gold medal into the lake, fully clothed after the ceremony. Yeah, so Gert had to go for a swim. So yeah, he won, uh, Pierre won two back-to-back -back two-man goals. And that one, I think, was with a uh, Braven called Julio Zardo, who was around for a couple of years. Now, he and, uh, often talks about his wins in Koenigsee yeah. because obviously it's a German track and yeah. winning against the Germans on a German track is, uh, yeah, one, uh, I'm sure is one of his favourite and, and he speaks German like a native as well. So oh, he's, certainly. yeah, yeah, no, he really, yeah. Hit it was really uh, funny this year because the British boys uh, didn't really know where Pierre was from because he was he was speaking with us and uh, um, and then all of a sudden he starts speaking German yeah. and they're like, where is this guy from? And he's some kind of James Bond kind of uh, character. So <laughs> Pierre liked that a little bit.
with the white hair and beard there in the center of the shot between the banners. That is uh, Coach Tuffy Latour, who uh, for many years has been head of the uh, US program, now focusing uh, exclusively on the skeleton team, but uh, a real historian as well. So actually, Tuffy has just set up a, a YouTube channel with some fan. He's just dragging together fantastic old footage. He's got footage of, of action from Lake Placid and San Moritz, sort of back in the 20s, 30s, where that picture on the top right, you know, that kind of vintage. Wow. Some of that is, is there's movie footage and Boy, yeah, it's a whole different world. Our it's sport has got such world. a long history, and mm -hmm. it's so cool to see the different sleds that um, uh, have been developed along the way, and how it all started. And it was there was no cowlings or anything yeah, no. on the sleds; so everyone was so exposed. And if you um, if you crashed, you went flying off the track. Yeah, and absolutely, it, yeah, it's Hence come the a long way. And in fact, in the 48 games, this start building, the little round tower that you can see, and the and the square building behind it, that was all there was that was the entire thing and the Dracula Club was added in the 70s late 70s early 80s uh, by Gunter Sachs, the mm -hmm. millionaire playboy who was also a bit of a bobsledder. And a, a, and a corner is Samaritz named Bob after Club. him down here. Exactly one, so. One of the trickiest corners. And so... Yeah, Sachs. Martineau is named after the first ever president of the Samaritz Bobsleigh Club, which celebrates its 125th anniversary this year. Amazing. And Portago, named after the Marquis Alfonso de Portago, who was a, a millionaire racing driver, businessman, bobsledder, uh, won an Olympic medal in bobsled and then lost his life in a crash in the Mille Miglia road race in Italy in 1957. So he's, remember, there, Nash and Dixon, the only members of the Samaritz Bob Club to ever win an Olympic gold medal. Yes. That's why two yes. British guys have corners named after them. Mm -hmm. They basically used to come in a Land Rover with a sled on the back and lived in Samaritz for the season and drove from Samaritz to the various different races and uh, they were members of the Samaritz Bob Club. So... And now, now, what I want to know is, and, and I haven't asked anybody who should know, what were Nash and Dixon called as corners before 1965 oh. when they had won the Olympic gold medal? All anyway, right, we'll go away and do some research later I, tonight. I need to ask somebody who knows these things. I need to find Fritz Burkhardt, because he will know. Right, let's get into our second run then. So, Flavio Minardi of Italy was the very first man to start this competition. That was a great honour. He had a start record and a track record. Let's see if he can get another good run. Like the Edelweiss on the side of the helmet there and the Italian uh, Bob's Federation logo right in the centre. 22 years old, youngest athlete in the field he is, in fact. In fact, he's one of the youngest athletes who'll be competing all weekend. Can't imagine there are too many younger. Well, there's a What's few. Lauren there's a 22, few. 23. No, she's a little bit older. There's yeah. a few young um, brakemen yeah. there, especially on the German team. But you also obviously have um, Victoria Chenenska and, yeah. uh, and those That's younger right, 20, girls. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There are lots so of from little the Youth Olympic there. Games. So he's been competing in Parabob since 2016, one of our more experienced sliders. He must have been very young then as well. Uh, he's also a curler, throws the javelin. He's a Paralympic weightlifter and is a full-time purchasing manager for the co-op in Cortina. So apparently he drives his uh, uh, local Cortina residents, have told me uh, last night, drives his car and his electric bike a little bit too quickly and enjoys a party. That's what we want from our Olympic athletes. Thank you very much. 6.36 getaway for Flavio Minardi. Now, that's a much tidier first corner. As we said, the clock, the start clock, is after the first corner. He had a 6.45 in the first heat, much tidier in the second, but... A little bit of trouble in. off of wall here, but that's what I was saying. These guys went very early off in, mm -hmm. in the first heat, and so they had very different ice to what they have now. So it's going to be interesting to see how this heat goes for this Group A. So middle height, and that's a pretty nice run down from Horseshoe through Telephone and Shamrock and Devil's Dyke. Into Nameless and onto Tree. Sixth at the start, and he is up to fifth place, so he is having a good run for Brizio Minardi from Cortina. Bit skiddy heading into Martino. Fourth best speed. Here we go. This could put him ahead of Fabrizio Caselli, his teammate. No, not quite. They are four hundreds apart because we love a race between teammates. Oh, certainly. Races within races is what makes as world championships really interesting. 
As I always say, if you can't beat your teammate, you're never going to win anything. So they are your greatest enemy competitively. Not too bad off of Sonny here, but his nose is away and he gets that, caught by that loose start, which a lot of athletes have been getting. So there you go. That's for uh, Flavio Minardi's uh, second run down. And now his teammate, David Yenevine from the Sudtirol. So they come from very different areas. Sudtirol is the German speaking part of northwestern Italy. Cortina is in the Dolomites, Dolmiti, on the northeastern side of Italy. And then their teammate comes from Mugello, which is very, here very in Italy. nice first corner. Maybe a little bit too much steering, but we'll see how we go. Second best velocity. And again, keeping it nice and quiet here. Again, barely daring to breathe. Gets caught on the end there, but not too bad. That was very nice. Gets a little square tap, and that just puts him nice and straight. That's the thing. If you get a square tap and you go straight, then the, then the sled isn't too bad. But lots of ice spray yeah. up there. That, that may be the most sideways entry into Nash we've seen all year. Whoa! Very high. And he just tried to lead it up onto telephone, but the rear runners were not keen to go in that direction. Not too bad. He's got the sled back under control here. Top 10 speed. And he is looking to creep ahead of Gabriela Napova. Nice and straight going into Martino there. First heat for David, 115.23. What's he going to have here? 114.13, so 1.1 seconds quicker. That's an improvement. Sitting 10th currently. OK, so 11 sleds down and eight to go. Seven to go, I can't count. Very high line in, tele, uh, in the horseshoe. Hide a little bit later after the sign there. Yep. Bringing it down and the sled just flops off and the back end just gets pushed away there and nose going into telephone and he, but he navigated it pretty well. Over it down hard there, didn't he? Now then, what about Nico Johan from Germany? He was one of our lead group. Had a really nice first run here, so see, let's see how he goes in this second heat. He's been an X Games competitor in free ski and in mono ski, 6.41, so giving away a little bit of speed at the start. Keeping it nice and straight. He didn't look very happy with his first heat, did he? Yeah, he did, which was quite surprising because it wasn't too bad. So maybe he thought he knew how to fix it. Driving Monobob isn't uh, quite fun enough. He also throws in a bit of parachuting as well. Oh, why not? I know. Thrill seeker by the sounds of it. Well, I, I, I don't think there's a single athlete here who isn't genuinely. And, and that goes equally for the para and all the other fields. Mm, not too bad here. Lacking a little bit of speed there from the mistake out of Horseshoe. Now, if he can be clean here all the way down to the line, he can really gain time. But there you go, a little oh, tap. Skinning through leap and sacks there. And all the way down the straight. Pinball wizard, I'm afraid. That's if he wasn't happy with the first heat, which I thought looked pretty good. This is not going to please him either. Yeah, Nico Johan, no, I don't like that away. at He's all. Not happy. Now, is he indicating that? He's got a problem with the sled, or is he just really not liking that? Definitely. Well, I think, think he's, he's got a problem with the sled. Oh, there we go. The alignment is broken. broken. Okay. Well, that's going to be very interesting to see what happened there. Well, now, if there is a technical issue... I mean, he did look is. like... Okay, I'm not sure. He did look a little bit out of control there, so yeah. it wouldn't surprise me. You can see the runner tips there. He's trying to get the sled back online. Now, if there is an issue with the sled, then he may get the opportunity to go back up and do a, a, a second run. Oh. Meanwhile, from Spain, Israel Blanco. He comes from Asturias in the north of the country. Seven tenths back on our leader, Chris, there. See if he can move a few spots up. Sporting the minions on the helmet. 
Oh, not too bad. It's a bit of a skip, but not a tap there. Holding on to that seven tenths behind Chris, our leader. Getting the drifts back under control into Horseshoe. Needs a good exit here, but just clips telephone coming down. Not too bad out Devil's Dyke there through Nameless into Tree. Golden Bronze in the two races in Lake Placid, his favourite track at the start of the season. But with the first run with these sleds, he was 12th and 16th last week in Innsbruck. Ninth best speed here at the bottom. Well, he was fifth starting the run. He's dropped to ninth, though, at the end of it. So that's a, a bit of a retrograde step, I'm afraid. 114.28 compared to 113.92 in the first heat. So he's lost about three tenths of a second. Not happy with that. Bit of a later hide around horseshoe there. So he would have had to really drive the sled down here. And I think, it's, yes, his back end um, taps there and he's got nose going into telephone, which means you really have to work around there. Yeah, he knew he was in danger there. He brought it down hard and just a fraction early. Artus Kotz now for Latvia. A European champion. Mm -hmm. Former track and field sprinter. And loves the track in Segulda, so he clearly likes a track where you have to really work hard for your living. Like Very nice. always say, if you can survive Segulda, you can survive anywhere. No, you'll have no fear. For sure. Very nice first top section here, heading into wall. Not too bad. Very nice. He had, didn't have, he had minimal waves around wall there. Long drift down into sunny. Not too bad around the flatter section of the track coming into Horseshoe. Didn't have big height, but kept it clean on the exit, and that's reflected in the speed. Not Second too best bad. speed. Very nice. Probably the best we've seen in this heat so far. So quicker than anybody else. Fastest up to this day has been Hem and Almeyer. Bit skiddy coming down into Martino. Seventh best speed. Two-time world champion, won his first title here in 2017. Is he in the frame? He's in fourth place. One thirteen forty-eight. He came down in one thirteen sixty-three in the first heat, so that's a little better. Not too bad. A little bit of a tap, which would have pushed him away from Saxon. That's why he came out with a lot of pressure coming in, into that straightaway. So 100th behind Lonnie Bissonette, third and fourth at the moment. And here comes Jonas Fry, perhaps Switzerland's big hope, the double world champion. Last year in Lillehammer, two years ago here in Samaritz. Nice clean. first corner. Ideal seating position, eyes just about visible over the cowl. See how he comes out of wall. Oh, oh not great there. Yeah, trying to hang on to wall a little too long there. There's just not enough speed. And, and again, really gets... hard steering at the beginning of Sunny, creating a wave around there. Not it's ideal. Trail. You want to be really smooth around Sunny to build a lot of speed. But very nice line. Oh, back in, got caught up on before telephone. Best result this season, fourth in the second race in Lake Placid. He's had two top six finishes and an eighth place in four races. So maybe not on his best form this year. Again, every one of these will be like a, a dagger in the heart, won't it? Oh, certainly, especially on St. Moritz here. You don't want to be hitting, coming into these big straights. You want to be building your speed. OK, sneaks ahead of Fabrizio Caselli. So he is fifth at the line, but only the eighth fastest run on 13.61 for Jonas Fry.
got three more athletes left, and this is this is where the the field was really tight. So it's going to be interesting to see how this second heat goes for the the athletes, the remaining athletes. So for Great Britain, Corey Mapp. Corey had a really nice looking first round to put himself right in the top four or five sleds. It was a, a tight group until our final run. Corey Mapp, European champion in Oberhof three seasons ago, two, three silvers in the last three Europeans. Nice first corner there from Corey, doing a great job, been competing for quite a long time. Yep. Started back in 2014. It was part of the Army Rehab sporting facilities in Headley Court, which helps a lot of uh, returning servicemen. Not too bad. Oh, but he's getting really caught yeah. up on the on the ends of these corners, That's which get dragging speed out of the sled, isn't it? Yep, certainly. Nice out of horseshoe. Got to get it tidy here. Not really nice out of Shamrock. That can be a very tricky corner here, so he did very well there, but let's see how his speed is. Needs to be clean at the bottom here. These four corners are so important for firing you down towards the last couple. Just avoids a touch on the wall. There you go. He's gone from 10th to 5th best speed, so he's limiting the damage. It's not going to be the fastest run. Third place at the line, 113.60. He had a 113.43 in the first heat, and that did look like the top of the track was causing him a lot more trouble. He doesn't seem to be too happy with that run, shaking his head there. Yeah. Well, you want to go better on your second run, don't you, rather than slower, and that will have not felt so great. It's really hard. And logo on the helmet. It's really hard. This uh, four heat race here, so he, he can't be too down on himself. He's got to go back, collect his thoughts, and and go again tomorrow because he's certainly not out of the race because you never know what the other athletes are able yep. to produce. Whole different day tomorrow, different track conditions, different weather conditions. Corey Matt disappointed with himself there. He'll go and have a chat with Graham Richardson, the coach. Next up, Bob Bulk. Had a really good first run. He currently lies second in our World Cup standings with a bronze medal in one of the races in Lake Placid and one in Innsbruck as well. So for a newcomer to the sport, and he really is a newcomer, then uh, he this is only his second year of sliding. He is having a very strong run and again, really clean like he was in the first heat. Not too many ways around wall there and manages to squeeze away from the wall. Just allows the straight sled to come straight behind him. Nice ex. Oh, I thought he was going to miss that corner there, but he did clip it. And ice went flying, coming into horseshoe. Oh, very low line there. He gets it out nice and clean. Doesn't get much acceleration out of it. Ninth best speed going into Devil's Dyke. Coming down into tree and bridge. Taking a little bit of a lower line around Bridge, but he's really doing a nice job here. Bit skiddy out of Sachs, 11th best speed at the bottom. Yeah, that's that's all though, that driving to hold the line down in those fast corners where you're trying to let it fly. 113.62 for Bob Bulk compared to 114.05. So 43 hundredths of a second of an improvement, and if that's not worth a place or two in the overall standings, I don't know what is. We've got lots of movement up and down the leaderboard here. Our first heat, really, our second heat has really changed the leader. We've got our last slider here. Yep, so this is Will Castillo from the USA. Army veteran, wounded in Afghanistan. Fourth season of sliding, and Another of the athletes brought into the sport by Kim Sievers in the USA. So again, nose right on the cow. Under the watchful eye of Brittany Reinbolt this year, the US sliders are doing a fantastic job, having a great season. Currently one and two in the overall ranking. Yeah, nice clean run through the first couple of corners. Only in the second run in Innsbruck, his second race in these new sleds, did he not get a medal this season? 
not too bad out of wall. Coming through the snakes into Sunny. Taking that lower line. The US athletes are kind of taking these lower lines through these corners. Well, when you haven't got so much speed in the sled, maybe that avoids the ambition of trying to let it climb too high. Flops off into telephone. Six best speed out of telephone there. Coming. Still a top three run. Our top two, Chris Stewart and Herman Elmay, are currently separated by 19 hundreds. He's going to be very close to second place here. Little tap from Will Castillo. How close is he? Oh, the speed's gone away horribly. He was looking to be on target for second. Maybe third ahead of Corey Mann. Yes, yes. he is. By three hundreds of a second and a tenth ahead of Lonnie Bissonette and eleven hundreds ahead of Artus Klotz. So there you go. You've got Will Castillo, Corey Matt, Lonnie Bissonette, Artus Klotz separated by eleven hundreds of a second. We have a hell of a race on our hands here yep. for that third place position. And again tomorrow, when all the positions are swapped around once more, we could well see them battling maybe for silver, maybe gold. If Herman Almeyer and Chris Stewart don't have clean runs in the third heat, then all bets are off. But the local athlete had a hell of a day today, starting off with some really nice runs, getting himself into a good lead ahead of the Austrian and the American. <laughs> Can hear Brittany laughing there with Will Castillo, but yeah, Chris Stewart, what a fantastic start to the competition he has had. Well, I don't know how well he slept last night, but I bet he has a bit of a, an up and down evening this evening as well. Local athlete, he is also the president of the International Parasailing Club here in Samaritz, as well as being an IBSF para-athletes rep and our first day leader. Well, all eyes were on Jonas Fry from Switzerland, the double world champion, to maybe go for a three-peat here. We may get a Swiss winner, but it may not be Jonas Fry. He's 9100s back. That seems like a lot to make up in two runs because the guys ahead of him are experienced and uh, pretty consistent. And Hermann Allmeyer in second place. Uh, that is a, a good start to the competition for the Austrian slider as well. That's a really good start for him. From and then... three to six, we've got such a close <laughs> yes. race there. It's so yeah, exciting to see. That's exactly what you want in racing here. And then Bob Bulk in an Italian sandwich. Fabrizio Caselli is 300 faster than him and Flavio Minardi 100 slower. Wow. So there you go. That's a dead heat, basically. You've got another dead heat with Nico Johan and Alville Sprantz. Now, Johan, it does not look like is getting a second run. Dead heat pretty much between Sebastian Weston and Israel Blanco. And then not much between Austin Parker, Michael Steele. Stevens, and then uh, David Yenavine and Gabriela Napova. Really exciting race. I'm excited, going to be very excited to be back here tomorrow with you and seeing how... Now you're doing all the heavy lifting this weekend, aren't you? Because you're going to be doing heats three and four of the para and then a quick break for lunch. Bring something with you, by the way, because <laughs> the Toasted Sandwich Maker is going to be in big demand. And then we've got women's bob starting tomorrow afternoon and concluding on Saturday morning. And then we'll give you 24 hours off before you ask you to race a sled on Sunday. That is it then for day one of the Para Worlds. We'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m.